Testament is covenant. It is the same word in Luganda. Eh? Luganda but in the English, they, they, they differ. There is a testament and a covenant. A, a testament, something like that. Uh, you know, a testament is like a will. Testament, chiringanga, a damn muntu, yale seo. Yes, it is a will, that is what they call testament. And then there is a covenant. A covenant is a contract. Yes, there are maybe there are, for example, there are maybe two parties. And they want to partner, they want to do something together. So they enter into what they can call an agreement. And they come up with terms. So that is what they call a covenant, a contract, an agreement. But a testament, it is, uh, for example, a father makes up a testament, it is a will. Yeah, he has got property. But before he dies, he wants to ensure that his property is distributed according to his will. So he writes up what we call a will or a testament. So you see that the two are different. The testament is the will. Yes, and then a, a covenant is a, a, an agreement. So, in the Bible, the two things exist in the Bible. Yes, in the Old Testament, we have both the Old Testament and the Old Covenant. So, so before Moses came, there was an Old Testament. The things that God promised to his people. And when Jesus came, he came and brought us the New Testament. Hallelujah. So the Bible says, where the testament or where the will is, the owner or the maker of the testament must first die for it to be effective. You understand what I'm saying? So sometimes I ask people, why did Jesus have to die? And I hear many answers. Some say he died for our sins. He died for this and the other. But all those are a part of the reason why Jesus died. He, he died such that uh, the testament may become of force. Yes, yes, the reason why Jesus had to die is because he had made some promises. He had a will. But before this will is put into force, before these promises are obtained, it was necessary that the maker of the will dies first. So Jesus died. Such that the testament may become of force. Jesus died. Jesus died. Jesus died. Such that the will might become of force active. Such that the people may possess the will. Me, I had a mother. Mother uh, made a will before she died. That will was not active until she died. So the reason why she had to die was that I might possess the will. So you understand. 
the reason why my mother had to die. Basically that I might possess the will. As long as she remained living, I cannot possess. Though it is written, though I may even find the book, but I can't possess because he's still living. The moment she dies, as long as death is confirmed, immediately the will becomes of force. I begin to possess. I said, this is mine. That's why even when the saints of the Old Testament died, none of them could go to heaven. Because God had promised eternal life. But he had to first die. After his death, they can possess eternal life. So immediately Jesus died. Good news came to the people in the underground. And on the third day, they rose with Jesus. Hallelujah. Because of the blood, because of the death of Jesus. So Jesus died that we possess the will that what God had promised may come to pass in our lives. Everything that Jesus talked in the days of his flesh. For example, behold I give you authority of all serpents and powers of darkness to trump over them. All those promises they were beautiful but they could not possess them in reality until Jesus dies. The moment he died all those promises they became part of them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You understand what I'm saying? You know why Jesus died? That is the main reason why Jesus died. Some people are so much on the forgiveness of sins. Of course he died that our sins may be forgiven. But that is not the reason why he died. Forgiveness is just a party. But the greatest goal is for us to obtain the inheritance. The greatest deal is that the testament may become valid. So the Old Testament had the promises. Moses was the leader of that testament. Moses was the surety of that testament. But the Bible is saying there is a better testament. Verses 22, chapter 7, Hebrews. Verse, chapter 7, verse 22. The Bible is saying, By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. Hallelujah. Give me King James. A testament, a will. So in that way, the Bible is saying, Jesus Christ yes, Christo. is made, give me King James, a surety of a better testament. Yes, good. This is a better interpreter. The best testament. I don't know why the King James and they use the word better, but the real word is to be the best testament. The real word is supposed to be best or superior testament. So Jesus made a surety of the 
faced testament. So if you belong to Jesus, there are uh, in the will there are better things for you. Better than those that belonged to the people of Moses. In other words, the life that we have got to live must demonstrate a higher quality than the life of the people of Moses. Because the quality of life is dependent on the quality of the testament. Hallelujah. So Jesus is made a surety of a better testament. He is the one who guarantees the promises of this testament. He is the giver of the better promises. Through him, we are guaranteed to experience these promises. Now I want us to just look at the uh, verse 16. The Good Testament, because the Old Testament is called a Good Testament. And we look at the quality of the people there. Then us the book of Psalms 105. And I want to challenge you that your faith may be awakened. 105 verses 37. So, 37, verse 37. 37. Glory be to God. Are we there? Let me see where they are there. Are we there? Do you have your Bibles? Have you moved your Bibles? Oh, you, you depend on this one. I have mine. I have over how many? I don't know. You have got to always talk with your Bible. Hallelujah. You pray with your Bible. You open your Bible. Read your Bible. Sit with your Bible. You know, these days, Bibles are heavy. But I, no, know why I, bought, no Bible, I bought a big it's... one because I saw that we are in a generation whereby we tend even to forget the Bibles. I went with my friend somewhere and there were about five of them. And the, I said, let us share, let us open our Bibles. And they told me they have forgotten their Bibles. And yet we had gone for a mission. We are going to be there for over four days. And they said we have forgotten our Bibles. I cannot forget my Bible. It is, I can forget myself, but I can't forget my Bible. Very, I'm very true. I can forget myself, but I can't forget my Bible. How do I forget my Bible? Because my Bible is my life. My Bible is my mind. I walk with my mind in my hands. If I forget my Bible home, I have forgotten my mind at home. Because these days my mind is my Bible. If you ask me something, I tell you, first wait, let me see in my mind. And I open my Bible and I read my mind to you. So it is hard for me to forget my Bible. Because my Bible is my mind. What the Bible says, that is what I'm thinking. My thoughts are in my hand. I walk with my book. My Bible. So I want to encourage you, don't forget your Bible. At least forget the jacket home, but don't forget the Bible home. Hallelujah. So Psalms 105, verses 37. Now we are looking at the Old Testament. The people who were under Moses. As they were walking with Moses, look at the quality of their life. And then compare your quality. He says, 
He brought them forth also with silver and gold. Hallelujah. So even the Old Testament, the people could not walk with God. The people could not walk with Moses. Empty handed The Bible is saying, He brought them out of Egypt full of gold and silver. Give me NLT in that verse. NLT. NLT in that verse. Thank you for coming, many. You are so many. To, you, you. Next Friday also come, many number. Hallelujah. And tell a friend to come. Hallelujah. Look yes. at this. The Lord brought his people out of Egypt. Loaded with silver and gold. Hallelujah. Loaded with silver and gold. Today's language, you can say, loaded with dollars and pounds. No Uganda shillings there. Hallelujah, because Uganda shillings may be, may be precious stones. But there it is gold and silver. Hallelujah. In the Old Testament, you know they were walking under the Old Testament by that time. Because the blood of the animal that they had slaughtered in Egypt as they were coming out of the land of Egypt was the blood that guaranteed or that, uh, how can I say, uh, ratified, that confirmed the Old Testament. There is no covenant unless the blood is poured. So the blood of the animal, the lamb that they slaughtered in the land of Egypt, was the blood of the old covenant. So by that blood, the people walked in the covenant, in the testament. So the Bible is saying that even in that testament, they came out of Egypt, loaded with money, with pounds, with dollars. Hallelujah. By the power of the covenant. By the power of the testament. They walked out loaded with silver and gold. Because they are children of a testament. They are children of a covenant. They come out loaded. Covenant children don't walk poor. God is saying that you belong to a covenant. Therefore, you can't come out of Egypt to poor. You have got to come out loaded with silver and gold. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So children of the living God, we have to change our mind. If the Old Testament, if in the Old Testament, God could not permit poverty. How do you think that God can permit poverty in the New and the Better Testament? Hallelujah. If he never accepted poverty, if he never accepted dry pockets, in that Testament. In the good testament. What about the best testament? Hallelujah. God wants to do something in your pocket than you have ever thought of. Believe, believe, believe God that God is interested in making you financially okay. It all begins with the mind. As a man thinks, so he is. Begin to walk around thinking money is in your pocket. Walk around talking as a person who has money. Say that I'm the blessed seed of Abraham. All the money belongs to me in Jesus' name. <laughs> begin to have that mindset hallelujah 
So we look at that testament. The Lord brought his people out of Egypt. Loaded with the city of gold. So they walked with Jesus. They walked with Moses full of money. Hallelujah. So I believe that God wants to do something in our lives. More powerful than what he did in those people's lives. Look at the second part. There. He says, and not among the tribe of Israel even one stumbled in. Hallelujah. Give me King James. Give me King James. So King James says, as he has translated, there was not one feeble person among the tribe, see. Glory, glory be to God. Among them, none of them was feeble. It was, it was because of the testament. Hallelujah. Because of the what? Because of the what? Because of the testament. Because of that testament. Hallelujah. Because of the testament. Oh, glory be to God. Oh, glory be to God. Oh, because of that testament. So there was none among them that was weak. None of them that was feeble. None of them was sickly. Because of the testament. They were all full of strength. They were all full of youthfulness. They were strong. Joseph said that I am now 80 but I'm strong. Caleb said that I'm 80 but I'm strong. Moses was 120 but very strong. Yes, my eyes are seeing as though I am a younger person. My eyes are still very clear. As a younger man. Because of the old testament. Because of the good testament. Hallelujah. You should not accept that you are 60 years and the eyes are dying. Why? Hallelujah. No. Moses was 120. His eyesight was still very bright and clear. Hallelujah. So you do not accept that, you know, I'm, I'm getting 70, so my feet, my legs are getting weak because of the age. Fire, 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 fire. fire. That fire. is a fire a thousand times. Fire. That is the deception of the devil. You know, yesterday I slept without the net. Eh? And I woke up when the mosquitoes had disciplined me. And the first thing which came to my mind was malaria is now on your door. For five minutes I thought of malaria. Then the spirit helped me and I remembered that Jesus never only took my sins but he took also my sicknesses. The Bible says he carried my sicknesses in his body. As he carried my sins in, in his body. The same way he carried my sins in his body. Is the same way he carried my sicknesses. In others, as Jesus was made my sin offering. So in the same way Jesus was made my sickness offering. So as I believe that Jesus took my sin. He became my sin offering. That God made him sin for my sake. It's the same way God made Jesus sick for my sake on the cross. So I remembered 
And I said, I am not well because I sleep in a net. I am well because Jesus became my sickness offering. And my mind was liberated from malaria. <laughs> Hallelujah. Of course, I'm not saying that you tempt God by sleeping outside the net. But if you don't have a net, you have found somewhere you have you have no net. I used to not be in bondage because there is no net. Jesus became your sickness offering. Yes, you have to go to the Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So he says, because of the testament, these guys, none of them was weak. <laughs> Let me tell you, because of the testament, you should not go kadiwa. I tell you, you should refuse those things of aging because of the testament. You are not going anywhere in age. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I feel joint pains. Ah. If in the Old Testament, the testament gave them such promising. The Bible says that Jesus is a student of the best testament. That means you have more than that one. Your portion is better and greater than the portion that these people had. Said, I refuse to be weak in Jesus' name. I am never going to be weak spiritually. I am not going to be weak financially. I am not going to be weak in my body. Said that I am not going to be weak in my mind. I forget, I forget, I forget. Why How forget? can you be forgetful always? Huh? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That I've forgotten that Nerabid. How? You don't know the testament you are in. Don't you know the testament? You should not be feeble even in your mind. You must be thinking like more than even a computer. Because the Bible says you have not been given a spirit of fear. But we have been given a spirit of love a spirit of power and of super intelligence a sound mind that is the testament a spirit of power 2 Timothy 1 verse 7 a spirit of power a spirit of love and a sound mind Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So none of them was feeble. Through the New Testament promises, we refuse to be weak even in our thinking. You know you can be very strong in the body. You are very healthy in body. But when the mind is so weak, no idea at all. So you are not feeble physically, but in the mind you are so feeble and creepy. But Jesus brought restoration in all areas. Be strong in the spirit. Be strong in the mind. And be strong in the body. Hallelujah. By the power of the testament. Say that through the blood of Jesus. I am strong spiritually. I am strong in my mind. I think great ideas. I think better ideas. I think better planes. And I am stronger in the body. In the name of Jesus. By the power of the New Testament. Give him some hand clap. Hallelujah. You are going to do greater things. You are going to do bigger things. Because you have a 
sound mind. You are strong in your thinking capacity. You think at a higher speed. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us go to another verse. Uh, keep it, keep it. That's what I was saying. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. Look, he says, for God has not given us a spirit of fear. You hear? If you hear fear, fear is not from God. No, that is the devil. That is the devil. And, and, and preach the gospel of the devil. Say that I have not been given a spirit of fear. I refuse to fear. Hallelujah. So we go to Psalms 105. We go now to verses um, to verses 38. Aha, uh -huh, we are there. 38. 38 says, Egypt was glad when they departed. Hey, hey. For the fear of them had fallen upon them. Glory be to God. The fear of these guys. The fear of the men of God. The fear of these people. All fell upon Egypt. And the Egypt was glad that these guys are leaving their country. How do you say that demons are following me? How do you say that demons of the clan are following in this testament? There's a problem. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There is what? Egypt was glad for these guys to go. The terror of these guys fell upon those people. Demons should be afraid of you. They should be afraid fearing. They cannot contain your presence. By the power of the New Testament. Glory be to God. That is what Jesus has done for us. Yes, Hallelujah. The, the witch doctors, the witches should be on tension. They should be on tension. We should not be fearing them. But they should be fearing us. They should be on tension because we are there. Hallelujah. Egypt was glad. <laughs> Let these guys go. Because we may all die. If they spend here more one day, we are going to die. Hallelujah. I had of a testimony of Benison in Archbishop Benison in Dahosa. There was a chief witch which had called a global which doctors conference in his city. And this archbishop heard of their conference. So he said, I have cancelled the conference. And the people of media heard what the archbishop had said. And they took the information to the chief witch. And the chief witch said, we have already said the days. Who is he to cancel our conference? So there was that contention. The Archbishop is saying I've cancelled. The witch chief is saying the conference is going to be there. So the media guys had to call these two people on the UBS of, 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 of Nigeria. Hallelujah. So they came together in that evening. An archbishop was there and the chief witch was there. And the, and the moderator was here. So, Mr. Archbishop, uh, there, was, they, 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 there is an information that this chief witch has, has called a global conference of the witches. And again, we have heard that you cancelled the meeting. And now we, you tell the nation, we, the nation is, is not aware of what, you, you now assure the nation, seeing that both of you are here. 
So they began with the chief witch. So the chief witch said that we are going to have the conference and this is the date. And they went to the archbishop. Mr. Archbishop, you are here. And the archbishop said, I have already cancelled the conference. So they turned back to the chief witch. The chief said, I, 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 we are already making organization. The conference is going to stand. They turn here, they turn here. They turn. And, and the time was getting over. So the moderator said, Give the last words to the people. Three minutes, three minutes. So they began with the chief witch. The chief witch made a last call for the people, for the witches to come. On the set date. So they went to the archbishop as the last man. The archbishop said, Made later, how many minutes am I remaining with? And the moderator said, Three minutes. And he stood up. And he said, Mr. Moderator, the three minutes are enough for me to kill somebody. Glory <laughs> <laughs> be to God. So he said, three minutes are enough for me, and there are very many for me even to kill somebody. So he looked in the face of the chief witch. And he told the chief witch, Sir. Sebo. The Bible gives me authority to kill anybody who calls himself a witch. So I ask you one question, you answer. I kill you, I go away. Are you a witch or not? So the man looked at the guy. He said, you are wasting my time. Are you a witch or you are not? The man kept quiet. He said, I'm asking the last time. Are you a witch or not? The man said, mm -mm, I'm not a witch. Hallelujah. And the whole nation was on UBs of Nigeria. Even the president was watching. When the man said that I am not, the president immediately wrote, no more passport and visa for anybody coming in or out calling himself a witch doctor. <laughs> Hallelujah. And in the morning, very early in the morning, there was a man knocking at the door of the archbishop. And the Askari came out. You know, if Mama Fina comes to your door, you, you will know that this is Mama Fina. Those in the world, they know her. And the other one was a general chief witch in the whole world. So, all the security men, all the people knew him. So, in the morning, he knocked. So the Askari saw and he knew him. What do you want, sir? He said, I want to talk to the Archbishop. And he went to the Archbishop. You have a visitor, you have Mama Fina of the whole world here. And the Archbishop said, Let him come in. Here. And the Archbishop came to listen to him. And the man knelt down. And he said, Mr. Archbishop, I want to receive your Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we should not be fearing witches. They should be fearing us. Because we belong to the best testament. Hallelujah. The people who know their God, they will stand strong. And they will do exploits. You are the people that are going to do exploits in Jesus' name. Witches are are going to come to Jesus because of you. Hallelujah. Because they are going to try you this side and the other side. And they will see you unshakable. And then they shall come to you and say, Ah, dear, let us get your God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Proverbs 28, verses 1. How many minutes am I remaining with? 28 verse 1. 28 verse 1. No more fear. Say that I'm never going to fear again in Jesus' name. You say, 
you see, the wicked free when no man pursues. Read there, read for yourself. The wicked run is when no one is pursuing. Hallelujah. And who is the wicked? The unregenerated man. Unregenerated unborn again. The New Testament wicked one is the man who has no Jesus. Is the what they call the, the wicked one. Unregenerated, not yet born again. So he says that none believers their life is drawn when nobody is even pursuing them. The Bible says that even when a leaf from the tree follows, they run away. Hallelujah. <laughs> but he says, but. Give me King James back. But the writers. Nayaba tukirivu. Abode as a lion. Bavumu obaba gumu game poluguma. You have a word. But the writers. Nayaba took it. He's not saying that they are going to be bored when they pray so much. Tagaman tibagenda kuwa of mu yaba sabienyu. He's not saying that they will be bored when they fast so much. Tagaman tibagenda kuwa of mungga basibienyu. But he said the writers. Nayaba took it. They are bold. Bavumu as a lion. And who is the writer? Is the one who has believed Jesus. So you who have believed Jesus. In your spirit man. You are bold as a lion. Glory be to God. In your spirit in your heart. Munda mutimago. In your mind, you may be shake, shake, shake. But in your spirit, you are bold as a lion. And the devil just deceives your mind. But when you look at yourself in the spirit, you are bold as a lion. Hallelujah. You know, I love lions. There are two things that I make sad about a lion and an eagle. I always sad about them. But a lion. Ah, ah, when a lion is tired and wants to rest. <laughs> the lion knows that he's the king of the jungle. So, the lion will not first check, uh, is he a, a rat? Is he a, a monkey? Then I, sleep. I cover myself with the blood because there is a demon that may strangle me at night. You know me, I go, I, I, I travel in missionaries. But sometimes you travel many hours. And you, are, and you are tired. The first thing I begin with is to sleep. <laughs> because I'm so tired. Hallelujah. If I first say what Prince Peters are here. In this hotel about which principality. Uh, life will be miserable. But I know I'm a lion. So if I'm tired, I just snow for some two hours. Without thinking which animals are here. Because I know who I am. So a lion will just snow there. No matter which animals are around in that bush. If by accident. A monkey or maybe a giraffe or maybe an animal comes around. And it is trying to scare the lion. The lion will raise up. And just one rolling. Oh. Every small animal. Every animal. Will you have to run for its life. Every animal. So the Bible is saying you are that 
lion. If anything tries to disturb you in the dream, anything that tries to scare you, you rise and say, I am a child of the living God. I am born again. That is our roaring. Only one other time, a child of the living God. I am born again. I am the righteousness of God. Every demon must take off to secure its life. In the realm of the spirit, when you speak that word, you are like a lion roaring. That is the sound in the realm of the spirit. So you don't need to fear. We are never going to fear. We are not going to fear. How many minutes am I remaining with? Am I, my time is over. Hallelujah. I think we can end here. We end here. I think my time is over. I don't want to preach long and you get tired of me. We are still continuing, but I want us to end here. So, uh, Jesus is the spirit of the better testament. Yes, we are going in the, where we have been reading in Psalms 105, you can continue and read and read. Read down there and see how these children of Israel, they went out to, of Egypt. How they walked their journey. The Bible says that they were covered with a cloud. No heat of the world, no heat of the curse. No. All sorrows of the world, no. The Bible says that he opened the rock and he gave them water. That even on dry ground, the rivers began to flow. That is the, that old covenant. So we are in the New Testament. The dry account should be now flowing his money. If the dry ground flowed with rivers in the Old Testament, today because you are a child of the New Testament, you should be walking with that mindset. My, my Baluman account, my account of the bank, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I see it flowing with money. Rivers of prosperity are flowing on my account. You should be having that mindset. Think that way and think that way. Keep your thinking that way. And move your mind on that way. And as a man thinks, so he is. Glory be to God. So I want us to stand and we, uh, we, we talk to the Lord. We want to, 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 to start. Oh, okay. Before we, 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 before we finish, we are going to give in the house. Because 